three, two, one. Hey, everybody. It's Kate Wilson here. I have two special guests, and we are all here to talk about how April made a choice to invest in art, um, original art for her husband as a surprise gift. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. I first would like you to get to know April and Chris a little bit. So April and Chris, would you share a little bit about your background and who you are? Uh, yes, uh, I am a technology executive uh, currently working for the state of Massachusetts, um, doing some really interesting work. And I uh, have lived in Massachusetts for the past 20 years or so with my lovely wife and our family of four children. And who's this lovely lady to your side? This is my lovely wife, April. <laughs> Fabulous. Fresh, fresh from battling COVID. <sighs> so I'm April. I... Um... Just finished working overnight in the hospital, so this is how fresh I look. In the <laughs> Gorgeous. Uh, and I actually know Kate personally since 1998 because of my medical training where I met her husband when we trained together in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. This is very true. And Chris, I've known you that long too. You might not remember, but I was there too. We were the, sp we were the spouses. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's all coming together. It's all coming together. Well, thank you for that. Um, our, I would like to know about your connection to art. I've been in your home. I have a privilege of seeing the work that you do have, and it's, it's pretty, pretty remarkable. So can you talk to me about what, how, how art fits into your lives, I guess? I, well, in our current home, I think the home is sort of the biggest piece of art that we have. We, hmm. we, we built this house and it's quite modern with large windows. And so the view, which is basically a forest, is kind of the centerpiece of our sort of peace and tranquility and also sense of family at the same time, which is hmm. sort of the architecture of the home. Um, it's mostly all white walls and um, built in order to foster everyone living together kind of in a main room. So less separation and more togetherness. But in that main room, we have uh, artwork. Okay. <laughs> um, and then we have an, a, a couple other contemporary pieces and then a little selection of kind of more old fashioned um, pastoral kind of. pastoral homes like farmhouses. Hmm. And then a few, we have one Cambodian art work that's modern um, and that's quite lovely of a monk with beautiful orange color centerpiece and then um, some photography from my mom. So that ties into my kind of lifelong understanding of art is mostly through my mother and photography. And I felt basically distant from art most of my life. It never really was central for me. However, um, in 2015, I started pottery and that I do that weekly. And that's really important to me. Mostly I use it as my time where I try to make mistakes and I don't have to be perfect. And I really enjoy that. So that is my current connection to art. That's beautiful. So cool. I would love to see your creations that are, you know, where you're like, yeah, it's not perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would. And Chris, how about you? Uh, I think my connection to art is at least in the house has been in common, obviously with, with April and um, I think she has the eye and and often selects what we're what she's interested in and then brings me in and we decide whether is this interesting is this something that we want to see every day is this going to inspire us um, is this going to motivate us to do different things is it going to add to that um, peaceful tranquil atmosphere or detract from it. Mm. Um, 
And I think for me, art is tends to be more visceral. Either I have a reaction to it or it's just sort of there. Mm. Um, and I think that was one of the really kind of um, important things about uh, your artwork that uh, we ended up obtaining, which I saw in very small format to start. It was just electronic, and I had a very visceral, um, kind of emotional, uplifting reaction to it. It just made me happy, and that's not something that I sort of find a lot in, in just looking at art or looking at things that are artistic. Um, and so having then brought that in in large format to our house um it's something that where i sit in this room every day i can look right at it and it gives me that impact every single day so it's really it's almost like a functional art piece for me on a on a daily basis oh chris that's i that's i i love hearing that thank you that's that's beautiful okay <laughs> Seriously, 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 because I, I remember that day we were just, you know, looking a little and you're like, oh, I like that. And then April, do you want to continue the story after Chris saw in miniature this painting? How, how the process, I guess, officially, how, how did, how did the process go? But can you keep going? <laughs> I called you up and asked you if I could see your work and you invited me down to your studio. And that was awesome because it's very different to see in person artwork, but also the comprehensive mediums and styles and breadth of your work hmm. really um, impressed me, but also after looking through everything in your studio, I still ended up with this piece, which had so immediately captured. And I was shopping for Chris's birthday, and as a surprise, he didn't know that I was down there. So I was looking if there was anything else that I might like, and I just, um, you know, even in person, just loved this piece and thought it would be. Perfect as a gift for him. Yeah, and artwork as a surprise can be an interesting gift. <laughs> yeah. But I think in this case, she knew that I had kind of connected with it, and I, I think mm. it was pretty well confirmed when it arrived on our uh, on our wall. <laughs> and I was overjoyed. I'm I'm so glad it's in a beautiful space. It's it it yeah it's it's it. I had so much fun making it. April, what you may, I don't think I told you about when I was making this piece, but this piece is also a, a way of working out imperfections because I had very detailed drawn out the mountains and then kept going over quickly and quickly with the brush to make all those different layers. And I was, it was just like, okay, I'm just, I'm just going to release and, and let the joy and sort of you know, sort of curiosity take over. And I feel like, like I told you, the whole bottom was written with the word love. Just, I felt, I felt like I try to imbue sort of these feelings and emotions while I'm painting them. And I, I feel like they, it feels to me like maybe there was a way that it, it grabbed into you just a little bit, just a little. Yeah. So it looks really beautiful on your wall. And I'm so glad, Christy, here that you are still impacted by it. I feel like there's a Japanese um, culture rotates their art four times a year. And that makes a lot of sense to me because just like when we take out our decorations for the holidays, it's like, oh, I can appreciate it. It it it's, triggers me again. And so the idea of Rotating art, I think, is the same kind of thing. But if you're coming into the space every day, you do not need to rotate that art, Chris. You just keep it right oh. there. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great spot. It's hard to tell from this video. Um, we, When you come into our house, you're on the ground floor and you basically come up a level 
to our main area. And so this piece is basically at the top of that first staircase and mm. also visible in the whole main room. So it's like really the, probably the most visible location in the whole house. And it's kind of the rest of the walls are mostly occupied by windows. So this, if we were like looking for a space where it would work, but also fit. <laughs> This turned out to be a really nice compliment to the large windows that also show the outside. So it's, it's really nice. That's perfect. It's like it was made for you guys. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah, it's that good. was a nice added layer for me, which I didn't know about your process before, mm -hmm. before even we had it on the wall. And I enjoy it more now uh, with sort of understanding some of that process. And to me, I, I still haven't, I kind of look at that bottom piece and I, I kind of look for the love in it. <laughs> I don't see it directly, but I know it's there. It's sort of this pretty cool concept of, you know, you know, that you know that it's there, you know, that it's part of why you love this painting, but it's not in your face. You know, that's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. My secret evil plan is to hug the whole world through mm. art. Seriously. I just want to share love literally across the planet that's it so one down Good. Yeah. billion to go <laughs> i'm on my way i'm on my way <laughs> um yeah i'm i'm so glad so how did you feel the process was working with me april would you recommend that other people um consider working with me on on finding art for them their own spaces so um, obviously we have a unique relationship going into it. And yeah. so that really drew me because of your positivity, really. I feel like your lifelong positivity comes through in your art. So I see you in the art and I see your like happiness and positivity. So, um, but for me, visiting the studio was wonderful because like I said, just one painting on its own doesn't come close to all the different hmm. types of art that you are producing. And so if someone was, you know, working on consignment or asking you for a piece, I think you would bring a creativity to it that they wouldn't even necessarily need to have an idea of what they wanted, but that could be really powerful. You could help them through that process and show them different things that might appeal to them that they weren't even thinking about. Um, and so I think it's really valuable if someone can come to your studio to see your work. It's obviously nice also to just see it online, but it does have a physical impact if you can be in the space and, mm -hmm. you know, see the size and see the texture and touch things, hold things. Um, you know, the light just is different in a, in a real space, but working, you know, I picked something that you had already made, but I think working with your brain and creativity is always going to be a positive for people. Mm. Yeah. I honestly doing commissions is oh, it's so much fun. It's so much fun because people often know they would want something and they have an idea and it's really hard to translate art into words there's a real impasse it there's like this emotional part but that doesn't show up necessarily in language it feels like and so i i've loved every commission that i've done and it's been this process this back and forth of just sort of pulling out and i will offer and they will take or move and we'll we'll figure it out and get to a place where we have mostly they've been mountainscapes and or lakescapes. They've been nothing abstract yet, but they've been, um, we figure out the color and they get sketches and they get to decide what they like and what they don't like. And I share videos the entire time of me in process, talking about what I'm doing. And so there's a leap of faith, yes, to be like, it doesn't exist, but then there's also this uh, it's, it's, you know, we're creating it together. And so it's this beautiful thing where here it is as a final piece, they can enjoy it, but they also have the experience of the creation of it. You know, it's a really, it's a really neat thing. 
Um, it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. How common is that for an artist to take that kind of interest with, with commission? commissioning it? Yeah. I, I honestly, Chris, I feel like I am alone in the world in like what all of here is inside this vessel of a body. I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of artists do their own thing and this is what they do. I, as April was saying, like, I have this connect, like, I love people, absolutely love people. And I love, I love being curious and, and connective and what a gift to make something that is, is so personal. I did a, the last commission I did was for um, a husband and wife to give to their son and new daughter-in-law for their home. And she's from Tahoe. He's from Massachusetts. And so their first date was to go hike whiteface. And so they selected having me do a painting of whiteface for them. And they picked their home is sort of like retro funky. And so the colors are astronomical, like neat, like brighter than your yellow and teal and dark blue. And I hid their initials in it and a couple of hearts here and there. And I wrote the word love and made a video of myself writing it and then hiding it. So they know exactly where it is. And so it's just now this piece, they just gave it to them. And this piece sits on their wall between um, a Tahoe uh, winter Olympics poster and a, uh, I think Lake Placid poster. And so it's like bridging. It's this, it's just this bridging the two lives into sort of their connective and their future. And so commissions to me feel like this, there's so much meaning that you can put into something. It's not just paint on fabric, on wood, on a wall, you know, it's like, you can, I don't know. There's as, as the older I get, the more I feel that it's not about the stuff. It's about the, it's about our, our feelings about the stuff or about the people. It's about like, that's, that's where it is, man. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Interesting because I'm, in, the, in the case of um, our piece, I had an instant connection, but you're, mm but that connection was enriched once I knew about the process. And then I think that the process you're talking about in terms of a commission really does build that bond between the piece um, and the person. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I, I do enjoy them. I enjoy painting whatever I want too. Don't get me wrong. That's fun as well, but it's, it's a different thing than it's, yeah, there's a, it's just a very different thing. Well, I really, really appreciate your time today. And I'm wondering if there is um, a charity or a cause that you guys would like to give a shout out to for our huge audience. Well, we have a few causes, but our most important and most recent one is that we've become foster parents for the state of Massachusetts. And we've had some foster kids, and um, your painting helps welcome them into our house. So thank you. Oh, that is wonderful. That's what a beautiful thing. What a beautiful thing you guys are doing. Yeah. Is there how like how do people find out more about fostering? Uh, fostering is by state, so whichever state someone's in, it would just be going to like your state, you know, government website and learning about it. Uh, in Massachusetts, where we are, there's pretty extensive training and background checks and interviews and references and all a whole process that took us uh, about eight months to complete. And then you, you know, you decide sort of what you're willing to do. Our focus, our interest is the older kids, so kind of teenagers. Um, that being said, we've had a seven-year-old, an 11-year-old, and a 12-year-old so far, so not quite teenagers. <laughs> um, it's been great, and uh, it's we have four kids, but two are still at home, and they've been wonderful, and it's just, it's great all around. Not easy all the time, but it's been mm -hmm. great all around, so definitely. 
That's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. That's wonderful. And do you personally have uh, websites or anything that you want to highlight? Businesses, anything? No, I would get give a your, shout get out your to, vaccine. Uh, <laughs> okay. And to data. Yeah, go data. <laughs> go data. Use go, data. Go data. Fantastic. Good. Well, thank you everyone for staying tuned. And thank you, April and Chris, for giving of your time today and talking with us. So thank you. Bye, everyone.